What's going on guys? So today I'm gonna to show you how to create this really cool in-camera transition. So basically we are transitioning from one object to the next and here's the best part. You don't really need any crazy editing skills, no need to draw masks or create any Luma keys or anything like that. This is all about shooting it properly and then just adding a little bit of speed ramping in post-production. But don't worry, if you're new to this, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to achieve this effect. I'm not gonna show you the most interesting objects ever, but I'm just gonna show you something that you can use in everyday videos. For example, we're gonna be starting off with using some ingredients. So if you're shooting a lot of cooking videos, this type of transitional effect works really well with those types of videos. So we are going to start off with sriracha. Now, here's what I like to do. I like to place it on the counter and I wanna have some sort of marker because it's great to place your other subjects or other objects in the same exact area. That way your framing will stay consistent. So I have a granite countertop here. There's like these little marks on here from the stone. And it's really easy for me to remember where I place the sriracha when I shoot my next object. Now it's really important to understand that we are going to be using a solid color to help us out with this transition. So not only does speed ramping help, but using the same color over and over again on the reoccurring clips is very important. So I'm using this white countertop and this white wall to help me out with this seamless transition. Now for those of you who love to use autofocus, I do have some bad news for you. You have to use manual focus because autofocus is just not quick enough for this type of transition. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So whenever I shoot a video that requires a lot of movement, you always have to practice the shot. So for example, the type of shot that we're doing here is going to be a half orbit or a 180. So this is what we're gonna be doing back and forth. Now it's important to not only go forward, but also backward because in post-production, if you like the backward shot more, you can always reverse the clip and that will give the illusion of going forward. So let's try this out here. Now I'm gonna start off by using automatic focus and I will show you how automatic focus just doesn't work with this type of shot. So this is autofocus, everything is looking good so far. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go under the counter, circle around, hold it, circle down. Now to be honest, the autofocus was holding, but if you go faster, for example, if I go this fast, it's most likely not gonna hold. So that's why I always like to use manual focus because that's how you're gonna get the shot locked in every single time. So I'm gonna switch to manual focus. Okay, I'm gonna bring my eye up to the viewfinder. I'm just gonna adjust my focus here. And then I'm using my face as an extra contact point as I go behind the counter, go up, and go back down. Now, as soon as I reach the peak of the shot, which is right up here, I slow down a little bit. So that way, if I have any issues with my framing, I can always fix it because I'm moving slower than earlier on in the shot. Now that I'm done with the Sriracha, I can go ahead and replace it with my next item. Just push it out of the way. Boom, there we go. Let's start shooting this honey. Now, as I do this shot, notice how I hold myself together, elbows in, I wanna be tight like a ball, very similar to when using a gimbal. Now, I know a lot of you are probably gonna be asking in the comments, why don't I use a gimbal for this shot? Well, basically, a gimbal is very cumbersome for these types of tight, fast shots, especially because I'm not going a long distance. It's a very short distance, and for a gimbal to do that is just very difficult. So that's why we are going handheld. That's the best way to do this type of shot. And now for the last item, strawberry jelly. Remember, you wanna keep the framing accurate. In the center, whenever you pop up, the object should be in the center, so it's important to have your grid lines on or your center mark. 
So now that we got all of the objects and all of our shots, go ahead and scrub through your footage just to make sure that everything is nice and focused. If need be, load it into your computer so you can see it on a big screen. And then once you're happy with all the shots, it's time to import it into your video editor and I'll show you exactly how to speed ramp it and edit it so it looks nice and neat. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. I already have my clips selected and imported into my timeline. Don't worry if you use Adobe Premiere Pro, this setup is exactly the same. All right, so I'm just gonna clean up my timeline here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline by hitting Command Plus on my keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna conform all of this footage to work within a 24 frames per second timeline. And as I mentioned before in the video, we shot all of this footage at 120 frames per second. So if we wanna conform it to a 24 frames per second timeline, we need to slow it down to either 80% 40% or 20%. Now, if you need help in understanding frame rates, for example, editing with different frame rates in a timeline, check out this video right here where I cover how to do just that. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to start slowing down these clips. I'm gonna select the clip, then I'm gonna go to the read timer tool here. Then I'm gonna go down to custom and then put in 20%. Now we can see how slow the footage is when I play it back. So here's the trick. We are going to start and end each clip on this white wall right here. And we're gonna speed ramp it, add a little bit of motion blur, and it's gonna become extremely seamless. Check it out. So we're actually gonna start off with a speed ramp all the way up until I hit the honey right here, and then we're gonna slow down to 20%. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scroll to the part where I want it slowed down, and then I'm gonna hit Shift B on my keyboard, so now you can see how the clip is split into two when it comes down to retiming. Here, right here in the orange, this is your retiming tool or blade speed. And all we wanna do for the beginning part of the clip here is to hit this little arrow right down here and then go to fast and let's mess around with the speed ramp. I'm gonna go to eight times. Boom. Look at that, I actually really like that speed ramp. We're gonna add some motion blur a little bit later, but I really like this beginning. And then, as soon as we start losing the honey a little bit, we're gonna go back to another speed ramp. So same deal here, we're gonna hit Shift B on the keyboard, and then all the way down until we hit the white wall, which is right down here. We're gonna end the clip, and we're gonna speed ramp this little section here the same speed eight times. So check it out. And all right, so let's play back one more time. I hope you guys like my uh, sound effects here, but it's very quick. Actually, let's slow it down a little bit. It's a little bit too distracting in the beginning. So I'm just gonna slow down the clip in the beginning, maybe a little bit more. Right there is about good. And then boom, okay. So right now, this clip is set to about 287% of a speed ramp. So I'm gonna do the same setting for the end. So I'm gonna hit custom here, 287%. So we wanna actually make sure that the clip ends at a white wall. So let's see how that looks. Boom, easy, right? And then we're gonna do the same exact thing to the remainder of the clips. Again, you are going to start and end at the white wall. And now let's play it back. And to make this footage even smoother and even more seamless, we're gonna add some artificial motion blur. Now notice where I'm adding the motion blur. I'm adding it at the beginning and the end of each clip because that's where that really crazy speed ramp happens. So at fast motions, motion blur is a great thing to put in. So you can easily see the motion blur right here. If I disable it, no motion blur. Enable it, motion blur. So it's a major difference. Now all you have to do is add your sound effects with those whooshes to make it even better. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe with those notifications turned on. And I'll see you in the next video.